Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I am actually joined by Turner Arrington, who does all of our blog writing at Contractor Growth Network. And today we're talking all about the book that we just finished in April, which is Miracle Morning Millionaires. Turner, what's up, man? Hey, Logan, how's it going today? Good. So, Turner, the reason I brought you on versus Alex is one, is you read and enjoyed the book. And two is kind of talking about your background because the whole the book just for those that haven't read it real quick is pretty much how if you wake up and you win the morning you'll win your day and we've all read those books that talks about or those articles that talks about how CEOs wake up at you know God knows what hour this and that um, but there is a, some validity to it and Turner is a night owl so yeah. when, I, when turner first started working for us he there was no set hours it was because he was a contractor he would uh work whenever he wanted you know just as long as, as it was eight hours in a row and his eight hours would actually be i think you'd start at 1 p.m and then you'd end at 9 p.m and because we were all remote it worked out and then i was just like turner how how are you working at 1 p.m and then we found out that you would go to bed at like two or three and wake up at noon and then start work. And then for us, I was like, I can't do that. Let's start work at 10. So that was the new thing. You were still working from home. So you could wake up at 945 if you needed to and get work done. And then now, you know, we are all together in the same office. 9 a.m. is when the workday starts and you're generally always the first one there. Um, and then reading this book, you know, you've effectively gone from somebody who wakes up at noon to now I'll see your responses to things at like seven in the morning. So what what changed about you with this book? I mean, because you've slowly been progressing towards morning person, but it seems like you've really embraced this book. I mean, well, right now we're all quarantined and I was like, I like I like trying new things. Like I like going out to meet new people because meeting new people gives you new experiences, new views on life. I just like new things. So I decided, I mean, I also wanted to step up my productivity in certain areas. Like, you know, when I get off of work, I would be tired. I wouldn't even want to go work out. I would just make myself do that. But then I would just spend the rest of my nights just either hanging out, watching TV by myself or going over to a friend's house. And I just felt like I was kind of wasting a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was having fun, which isn't a waste, but I felt like I could be more productive with it. Mm -hmm. And so mornings seemed like a good place to start. So I just started with this simple, like, get up, drink some water, brush your teeth. And then I would just go about my day and I was like, okay, now I'm starting to get the hang of it. And then I progressed and started like taking these master classes that you helped us sign up for, started dabbling in writing stuff. Like, you know, I, I want to write a kid's book at some point because I think that'd be really fun and nice place to start. So now I actually have some notes down and some ideas just because I started mornings. And now I feel great throughout the day. I'm not tired. I'm not really groggy. I have a bunch of energy, sometimes almost too much energy. And it just, I don't know, it feels really nice. So with you, so let's talk about the book and like the first parts of the book is they talk about the five things that you need to do to get up in the morning. And it's the first thing is what I didn't realize is actually the most important part is you set your morning expectations at night. And what they talked about, which was, uh, you know, if you go to bed and I used to do this a lot, the days that I would sleep in, I realized there was a correlation are the days that I would go, Shit, I got to get up in five or six hours. Like, God, this is going to suck. And it would just work out that, you know, I would set my alarm for when, you know, I usually get up on average about 5.30. I would wake up at 5.30 and go, yeah, this is just not enough. Let me go back to sleep for another half an hour. And then at six o'clock, you would roll around. And then I would just keep playing this half an hour game until eventually it's like eight o'clock. And I'm like, oh, I guess I got to get up and go to work. So setting in the, the expectations at night was the biggest thing. And then the other four were, uh, one what was it one like keep an alarm across the room yeah two get up brush your teeth uh so i guess two was the alarm three was the teeth four was drink water and then five was what get dressed um exercise or shower is what he does okay exercise yeah so those are the five things so of those five things i guess how close do you stick with that like yeah so 
the being positive thing is huge. I can tell the difference in how I wake up. When I go to sleep and I think like, oh no, I only have six hours. I wake up groggy and just kind of tired and just like, I don't feel like doing anything today. This sucks. But when I go to sleep and I feel like, all right, tomorrow's gonna be great. I'm gonna get up, take some master classes, you know, advance my craft. I wake up and I'm like, oh, this is what it's like to wake up bright eyed and bushy tailed. Right. Then after that, I mean, my phone's usually walking distance. So if I choose to snooze it, I stand there, make the conscious decision, I'm gonna go back to sleep. And then, I mean, you know, the problem with snoozing is that you do it in 10, 20, 30 minute increments and it just wrecks your sleep cycle. So right. when I do that, then I'm just groggy the rest of the day and it sucks. So if I wake up at 6.45 and I'm just like, I'm not really feeling it today, I can sleep for an hour or an hour and a half and like go through a cycle and wake up feeling good. Uh, I prefer to brush my teeth before I drink the water. So I guess that's what oh, I do. But. That's a big thing that I have learned. It's disgusting drinking water when your teeth aren't brushed. You can do it, but you better yeah. hope you can like knock it back. Yeah. Um, as for the exercising and showering, I'll just do a hundred jumping jacks to get air going to my brain. And then I'll shower after I do my evening workout routine. So, so those are the big things um, because my I'm similar to you. And then when you set your morning expectations at night, which I would say out of all the things that we talked about in this book, that was probably my biggest revelation because I've always been a morning person. I've always, uh, when I wake up early, I go brush my teeth, I drink a full liter of water on my way to the gym, and I generally, uh, I used to fluctuate between five and 6 a.m. classes, but at the latest, 6 a.m. CrossFit class. So by 7 a.m., I'd already gotten up, brushed my teeth, um, drank a liter of water, did a hard workout, and now I'm heading back to shower, and I was like, always feeling good, but the nighttime, side of things is big and what that now forces me to do is to go to bed at a reasonable hour because i know okay i gotta get up <clears throat> at this point if i go to sleep in eight hours i, I gotta stop what i'm doing and just go lay in bed so it, it's actually helped me get to bed earlier which i personally love so it's been nice. yeah yeah i noticed that too like i've started going to sleep sometime between 11 and 11 30 which i mean it gets me enough sleep, but I still tend to like, I don't know, go to go back to sleep maybe like three times out of a five day period, depending on how I feel. So like I've been trying to work it back a little bit earlier to maybe like 1045 to 11, but that's yeah. a work in progress. And then what I've done is um, with Audrey, like she doesn't wake up that early um, because her gym is closed. Usually she would, but her gym is closed right now. So she doesn't, but I still want to get up and, and go. I. I go to the track to work out now during all this uh, quarantine. But what I do is I set my alarm on my phone. It's actually on my watch because I have an Apple watch um, and it will vibrate at 530. And then at 532, my iPad, which is outside the room, right outside the room, is on full blast with um, this like the very aggressive alarm. Because then what that does and that goes off at 532, which what that means is when my, foot, when my wrist goes off, it's very easy just to roll back over and go to bed. But when I know that if I don't get up and go turn that alarm off outside of my room, Audrey's gonna wake up. And she she's not somebody that's able to wake up and go back to sleep. She As soon as she wakes up for the day, she's up. So I would hear about it all day. So that's my way of forcing myself to get up and get out of bed is by effectively potentially screwing her whole day up. So that's how I've done it. It's been pretty helpful. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like I would I would love to put my phone in my bathroom, which is like right across from where I sleep, because then I'm already in there and it's like, oh, I can just brush my teeth now. Right. But the problem is when my alarm goes off, it'll wake up my roommate because it echoes and he he can't go back to sleep either. So if I just if I had another device like that, then I would definitely adopt that because that's smart. I like that. Because you could just do you can get like an actual like alarm clock, like one of the old school digital ones and just put that in the bathroom. Mm hmm. And it costs like six dollars and then what you're doing is you're just putting that like five minutes or two minutes or whatever it is after your alarm goes off so now you're like all right i don't want to wake the other person up let me get up and go so, that's a good one little, little little hacks here and there so the next part of the book then went into what's called the savers mm -hmm. the savers are your morning routine on, on how to pretty much uh take time for yourself to set your day up. So SAVERS is an acronym. So Turner, walk us through what SAVERS stands for. Well, first you have silence, which is, you know, 
meditation, prayer, reflection, just something, you know, low stress, easy. Like it said, Angelina Jolie likes to color or she'll just go outside and jump on her trampoline. Personally, I, um, I get on my phone, I'll scroll through iFunny or I'll catch up on words with friends, something just like low key that I can do without stress. And that kind of like, kind of like makes me uh, excited about my day a little bit. After that, you have affirmations, which is, you know, you telling yourself good things. It could be anything from like, hey, you're a good looking dude. You're good. Like, you're going to have a great day. You're great at your job, stuff like that. But well, he, mostly, sorry, mostly it's like, you know, and I'll jump in. Yeah, mostly it's like, you know, um, <clears throat> I think it was like you identify your result, what you're going to do to achieve it. And then you recite it every morning. Yeah. So what, what he talks about is instead of doing the affirmations on the results, which is, and he even makes fun of the, I'm a magnet for money and this and that. He talks about doing affirmations, which I love, on the leading metrics, which is the things that you can actually control. You can't control if you're a magnet for money, but what you can control is, you know, I'm, you know, like a firm, like I'm going to make those, you know, I'm going to make the calls today that need to be made so I can become a magnet for money. So mm -hmm. it's the stuff that you can physically control. Those are your affirmations. And that was another part that I love because I personally don't believe in, in the affirmations side of things in the sense that like, oh, if you just, you know, will it into existence by talking about the end result, I'm like, well, that's great. Like, oh, I'm a millionaire. Oh, I'm a millionaire. And it's like, well, what are you actually doing to back that up? Well, mm -hmm. he talks about making your affirmations instead of saying, you know, Turner's saying, I'm a kid's author, you know, or a, a, a child's book author, children's book author. Um, you know, it's actually like I'm somebody who is constantly coming up with ideas for children's books. So yeah. it's something that you more so can control versus just hoping for the end result. Yeah, I have a couple like those. I, I kind of slacked off on saying my affirmations. I, I don't know, like. I started out doing all five and then I kind of like find the ones that I like to do more than the others. So I just stick with those yeah. for now. It's it, mm -hmm. what, that's what happens. You start off doing all of them and you realize it's, it's like, it's kind of a lot. So I just pick a few. I always, yeah, we'll, we'll keep going through them and I'll talk, tell you about my routine. Yeah. Then we have visualization, which is, you know, you use all five senses to visualize like where you want to be in life, I suppose. Like, you know, if, I want to be a millionaire and I want to like buy a boat. I can visualize myself on my boat, just like feeling the sea breeze, smelling the salty air, tasting it, you know, driving the boat, stuff like that. And that's supposed to help you. I mean, I also do it for smaller things too. Like sometimes when I need to do a task, I'll try to visualize it for a couple seconds and then do it. Usually it works out better. So I try to do that every now and then. So for this, do you have a uh, like a visual board or anything like a vision board? No. <clears throat> I'll tell you about mine at the end, but I have one. Sweet. Then after that, you have exercise. It can be anything, even a five to seven minute one. Like I said, I do 100 jumping jacks. It takes me like a minute, but it's enough to get me you know, going. So I don't really need to do a whole routine or anything. Then after that, you have reading. So, you know, five to 10 minutes. It's all you need. And then. Then you have scribing, you know, writing. Just write down, you know, your appreciations, your thoughts, ideas, successes, breakthroughs, lessons you learned, stuff not to do. Just like a little journal. So for me, the biggest thing about all these savers is find what works and don't overdo any of them in the sense that when like the biggest problem with I think with people with meditation is they all want to do it, but they start off by wanting to do like a 30 minute meditation and you just can't like it, it doesn't work because you get so frustrated in the first three minutes so like with the first s which is silence if you're going to do meditation that's fine the way that i started meditation was i had the headspace app on my phone and they have one minute meditations where it's literally somebody's going to guide you through one minute of breathing or three minutes or five minutes you know whatever it is but if you start off trying to go for it all it, you're going to fail fast and literally like you can suck it up for one minute and just by sitting there for one minute and you close your eyes you, you just you're really just doing honestly like six big inhale and exhales with, of your breath while just thinking about your inhale and exhale and that's and then you're done and you actually feel way better after literally just one minute then you slowly work your way up 
So that's the one thing I will say is don't don't sit down trying to go, all right, 30 minutes of meditation, 30 minutes of scribing, 30 minutes of reading, 30 minutes, you know, so it, like eventually now your your miracle morning is turning into a miracle afternoon as well. Yeah. So so okay, so for you, Turner, out of all those savers, what is your what is your ideal morning look like? And what does your realistic morning look like? Well, my ideal morning would be, um, I guess, like my whole like <clears throat> silence thing, which isn't meditation. It's just me like preparing for my day via my phone. So I don't know if you could like, really what, call what it. What time do you wake up? Like what, what is your ideal wake up time? 6.45 to 7 o'clock. Okay, cool. I'll wake up. I'll do my, uh, you know, teeth brushing, drinking water, then like other routine stuff. And in that time, I'll do my silence, meditate on that. Affirmations, I figured out that's not really something I enjoy doing, so I don't do that. Yeah. Visualization isn't really my thing either. Exercise, I'll do 100 jumping jacks. Sometimes if I feel like I need more, I'll just knock out some push-ups real quick, but I like to save most of my exercise for later in the day. Then reading, you know, Book of the Month Club is awesome because it gives me like a good book to help develop myself. And if I ever finish those, then... Well, I guess I also do those master classes, which isn't really reading, but it's a learning. So I kind of put them in the same camp. Yeah. And then scribing, like I'll also like I'll if I have some ideas for books, I'll write them down. If I want to like work on the one that I kind of have like at the forefront, I'll just write down some ideas for like scenes or something like that. Uh, sometimes I'll just journal, just write about like how my day was yesterday or how I'm feeling right now or like what I have planned for later. Like I'm really excited because my friend's birthday is on Saturday. And then Mother's Day is on Monday and I have so much to do or just like try to write it all out and kind of therapeutic. So what is what is your day look like when you hit your miracle morning? Like you just described and what does your day look like when you oversleep and you wake up at 830 and you skip all that? When I do all that, I can feel a difference like just physically, like my eyes feel like they're open all the way. Like I'm actually interested in everything and i'm not like kind of like half tired all day whereas uh -huh. that's basically what happens when i skip so it's just like it's like having your cup of coffee in the morning is waking up early and you have that caffeine you feel good and then sleeping in late is like you don't get that caffeine yeah i i can always feel it for me when i hit it versus when i don't um mm -hmm. you can also see it like literally just like in visual expressions, when we have our morning meeting, you can tell who's ready to go and who hit a miracle morning on our team and who hasn't, just by their expression. It's, okay, it's did I hit my miracle morning today? Was that a question or a statement? That was a question. Did I hit mine today? It, it seems like you have, because you're like peppy as shit. I have hit it today. Okay. So, for me, my my morning is get up at 5:30, and this is like COVID related. But get up at 5:30, I brush my teeth. I have a Nalgene that's one liter of water. I drink that on the way to the track, and then I work out. I do a track workout, which is you know I want to get get into that, but that is my jam. And then I get back, and it's generally about 6:45, and then I'll eat breakfast. Uh, I call all that personal time. So that's mm -hmm. where um, S is silence. I may do like a learning, which could be like a master class, if you will. Uh, it could be, it's, it's me time. It could be learning mm -hmm. how to do chess on a master class. It could also be learning about, um, you know, how to sell better watching something. It's just, it's me time. Uh, affirmations, what I do is I, I've actually been writing out on my iPad, many affirmations, many rules. I've been going through uh, my energy morning or like my miracle morning by writing out certain things. Um, so I kind of combine affirmations and scribing into one. And it's it's just like, and I could be writing rules for myself, which would be like, um, you know, and, and it's and when I write a rule for myself, it's, it's feature benefits. So instead of saying, I will wake up at 5.30, it's I will wake up at 5.30, so I can ensure I win my morning before winning the day. So it's kind of like I write feature benefit um next thing is visualization i have a visual board um i have on it it's 
uh, a few things that I really realized kind of why um, I push very heavily in, in everything in life. Um, I have, uh, do you know who, you ever watch the show Billions? I've not. Uh, there's a dude in there. It, it's a it's a, it's a good show, but the main character, his name is uh, Bobby Axelrod. But I have like a picture of him because he just runs this like really tight ship, really smart dude. And I'm like, that's that's who I want to be. You know, I have this uh, picture of like it's this cabana pool overlooking the ocean in like Antigua. And I'm like, OK, you know, that's what I want. And what I realized is I want to have a, a life where maybe I don't buy that house. But my parents have this cool thing where, uh, you know, my dad's done pretty well. And what his goal is, is to instead of leave us an inheritance, is he wants to spend he wants to perch die with zero money. He wants to spend all, you know, what he's made over his lifetime on experiences with his, the people that he loves now. So it's a very different way of looking at it, but I, but it's cool because what he'll do is he'll just say, all right, guys, I have a house in Hawaii. Um, I'm, we're, we're going to be, you know, your mom and I are going to be here from this time to this time. If you want to come out and, and hang out with us, get a ticket, we'll see you there. And that's what I realized I want to be able to do with friends, family, and everybody else where like, I want to be at a point where. I don't buy the house, but I'll say, all right, guys, I'm, you know, Audrey and I are going to Antigua for a week. Uh, you got to fly yourself out there, but we got you once you're there. Let us know if you're coming. And just like, because it's so much fun with stuff like that. So I have that on my vision board that I have um, in CrossFit, the, the main dude, his name is Matt Frazier. He's just like this beast of a dude. So of course, you know, I want to have a ripped guy on my vision board. So those are like a few things that like I'll look at. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I get it um exercise already went over that and then reading i used to read a lot but for me it's i only hit some of these mornings you know uh some of the uh the savers just because again it's too much in my opinion and i could read little things here and there but i really go for um the exercise is my biggest one uh the visuals are nice and then the scribing is kind of like silence writing and affirmations all wrapped up into one and when that, and when I do a scribing or writing, I really only do it for like ten to twelve minutes, and that's it. I like that's the scribing and the paper. I like the scribing your affirmations kind of combination because writing things just imprints it better in your memory and your subconscious. So I feel like you're more likely to achieve them if you write them down than if you say them. I mean, that's just me. Exactly. Yeah, I'm with you. So. Yeah, those are your savers. It, it sets up my day big time. I always feel fantastic when I do it. And when I skip it, I feel horrible throughout the day. And, and half of it's mental. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm sure there's like a, a certain side of like biology of when you skip it, you don't get your endorphins and when you don't get your endorphins. But the other half is really like I lost my morning, which now sets me up for potential failure throughout the day. Yeah, so, like I feel like I'm I feel like I'm just at the halfway point, like. I'm just good enough, but I still feel like I missed out on my morning a little bit. It's kind of sad, but I'll just do it tomorrow, and I'll try to remember this feeling so that I don't have that tomorrow when I wake up. Yeah, exactly. So uh, and then the, the, the remainder of the book was talking all about – it started to become a bit redundant, where it's about, you know, millionaire this and make money doing that. I mean, how, how did you feel about the rest of the book? I mean, I liked it. I thought that the like I've heard some of the lessons before, like making your money work for you. So I mean, I was like, I read it again. I was like, okay, this is a good reminder. Maybe I should invest again. And then COVID hit, and the market kind of tanked. So I I invested. Oh shit, how much was it? It was um, I think I invested a few three grand into nice. with my um financial advisor group. And once I get get like all this other um. I got my tax returns. I, once I get like the COVID relief check and stuff, I'm going to invest another grand or so because this is this is a good time to do it. And whenever I get some bonus money, that's what I do. So, but yeah, it was, it was like a lot of the other books that I've read about like how to use your money effectively. So how does this book compare to like Rich Dad Poor Dad? I think it's pretty similar in the lessons it imparts. I haven't read Rich Dad Poor Dad in a long time. So my, my, uh, my like memory of it's a little bit off. But I feel like it's more like make your money work for you and change your mindset and your mental acuity to be able to be a person. Because if you're a better person, you're more than likely to be able to achieve your goals and make money or yeah. have a happy family or whatever it is that you want from life. Yeah, I 
So that was like one of the big things here. It's like kind of like make your money work for you. It's kind of like make your mornings work for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same principle where in one sense you may go, yep, I definitely wanted to sleep in an extra hour today. And every so often that's fine. But when you or when I personally get up in that hour, I'm actually, I can get more done throughout the day, which means that it's the same as investing one hour in the front end to get back three extra hours of productivity throughout the day. So it's it's making my morning work for me, even if I don't want it to, because it never really gets easier. I mean, waking up that early, it's not like I enjoy it. Your bed yeah. is warm. It's nice just to, to sleep in. Uh, it's it's a fantastic feeling, and it's not like it ever gets better. Um, it's habitual. It just, exactly. That's what it just becomes a non-negotiable, and it, mm -hmm. it really helped me when I was doing CrossFit by having a group fitness class meet at the same time because now you add in the fact that you've got accountability, and it now you just wake up and you're like, well, I don't feel well today, but I'm gonna go in because whenever we skip, we give you shit. You know, like, well, like when everybody records their scores, they'll still, whoever skipped, will still put that person in and then give them like a zero. So they're like at the bottom of the scoreboard. So they still show up, but it's effectively letting everybody else know throughout the day that so-and-so skipped today's workout. So it, it does help having accountability um, for that stuff, which is why I love that, why I put the alarm, you know, the iPad with the alarm outside the bedroom. Um, so it doesn't wake up Audrey, stuff like that. So all in all, I mean, I like the book. It affirmed a lot of what I've already been doing since so I've been a morning person since about 21. So mm -hmm. I guess about eight years now. Um, and it just affirms a lot of that stuff. So I thought it was good. I thought the end of it was a little bit redundant. But again, you know, if they just presented one topic and moved on, it probably wouldn't resonate. But because they repeated the stuff over and over and over, it starts to really stick in your brain. Yeah, like I was a night person since ever. And yeah. uh, in the past two or three weeks, I just feel like, I don't know, like I want to change. <laughs> like I actually want to become a morning person. Like, so like when I would get off of work, I didn't feel like I have all this time. I could be productive. I could do this and that. But it would always be like I would exercise and then I would chill. So I kind of felt like I was wasting it. And now I, I do this in the morning. I can rationalizing like i was productive this morning i learned things i wrote things so now i can leave my evenings to doing whatever i want i can chill and that's what i really like yeah it does it opens up like a world of of stuff and i've always found that for me people that wake up early like whenever i would move to a new city right because i used to move around a lot um whenever i moved somewhere new i didn't know anybody I would join a CrossFit gym and go in the morning because what I found was those are the people that are very diligent and regimented um, and disciplined. So, and there's also like all these, like as far as, far as advertising and marketing goes, like the, the people who are naturally in good shape and they go to the gym in the morning, they're the ones that are disciplined in life for the most part because they get up and do that stuff. And they generally are the people that run better businesses. So that's why CEOs, it's not, it's not a coincidence that CEOs wake up in the morning because they just want to check their email when it's quiet. It's because they have the discipline to, if, to do that. And if they have the discipline to do that, they probably have the discipline to do other stuff. So I used to join these uh, gyms, go in the morning, meet those people. And it generally worked out that those are the people that are, they had good jobs because they worked hard to get there. Um, they also like to go out and enjoy Friday and Saturday nights. So I'd go out and hang out with them. But then, you know, if we go out on a Friday night, everybody would still show up on Saturday because it was just like how everybody was wired. So I kind of found my groove with those people. And once I kind of found that groove, well, then it reinforced, well, you better not skip this morning, get your ass up and go to the gym because that's where all your friends are in this new town that you know nobody. So it was, it kind of just became ingrained in who I was. And that was that. So, all right, Turner, any final words on, uh, on this book? Read it and try it. I mean, it, and, and if you try and you don't like it, you don't have to do it. But I mean, if you do, then it might end up changing your life. It might, exactly. So everybody, thank you very much. Um, if you're not in our book club, then go ahead and check it on out. CGM Badass Book Club, the book this month, which is by the time this podcast comes out, we would have already started. 
Um, it's actually a book, very outside the box book, but it's all about manipulation. So yeah, I read the title and I was like, ooh, this sounds like fun. Like <laughs> it's well, I don't want to jump too far into it, but like so far we've learned about like the different, you know, a narcissist versus a psychopath versus a sociopath. And what you start to identify is the patterns of which, and you realize like a narcissist may not, they may not understand that they're being narcissistic, but a psychopath does because they're doing it intentionally. So it's a good way because we all have those, those clients that do stuff and they may not know that they're acting in certain ways, but you have to approach it with, okay, are they doing this on purpose versus are, is this just totally ignorance on their behalf because those are two different setups from how to deal with them so yeah i feel like this book is less on teaching manipulation as most as opposed to teaching you how to deal with it and notice it and respond and that's everything is. i mean we like we everybody always i knew as soon as i posted that book about manipulation and this and that everybody's gonna go oh this is like it's a weird one why would you do this but if it if it didn't say manipulation and it just talked about you know persuasion and that's what it said because that's all manipulation is it's just persuasion but used for the negative side of things it's, it's the difference is i think persuasion is when i get you to do something for the benefit of you and me while manipulation is i get you to do something for the benefit of just me at your expense hmm. i feel like persuasion is more like using upfront i guess moral tactics whereas manipulation is more like doing behind the scenes and the kind of like doing it dirty yeah, it's, it's it's a combination of, of yeah, like that's pretty all encompassing. So that's, but they, they put these titles out there because it's like, oh, manipulation, this is interesting. But I, cause I've read other books on it and it's, it's not, it's not how to manipulate people. It's just what is manipulation, but then you just take that and use it for good stuff and it helps. I mean, it teaches you how to sell. It teaches you how to mirror people, teaches you how to become more likable, which that is exactly what, how to win friends and influence people is all about which is regarded as one of the most beneficial self-improvement books and they're the exact same principles but one is just saying here's how hitler used it negatively and the other one saying is here's how teddy roosevelt used it positively yeah so same it's a principles tool. yeah that's all it is so uh check it out cgn badass book club come join us there and as always thank you very much and uh keep reading turner thank you for joining me today